one of the key elements of any smart city is to improve the quality of life of its citizens. So many cities have policies and practices in place that are specifically focused on, on the quality of life. I mean, come on, who wants to wake up to this every single morning? Okay, so this is just one example of, of some of the issues that a city, particularly a busy city, may experience. Noise pollution. Cities are working towards finding and understanding and modeling information so they can implement policies that will address the growing levels of noise pollution. That's important because noise pollution impacts things like zoning, economic development, and ultimately the valuation of your own property, of where you live. So they have to solve this problem. In the past, and to some extent even today, many cities are using traditional GIS techniques to model and understand the impacts of noise pollution. I want to show you an example of a typical GIS solution. In this particular case, it's in Germany, and specifically in the city of Stuttgart where they have over 245 kilometers of city rail network that does unfortunately contribute to noise pollution. So like any GIS, what do we have? We have layers, and lots of them, unfortunately. We have land use layers, we have uh, building layers, we have road layers, we have hydrology layers, we have rail network layers, we could bring in points of interest data with associated attribution, we have a lot of layers, we have a lot of data. We could even run this data and pipe this data through a process to calculate noise pollution, overlay some imagery so that we can give it some context, but what you see here is a very typical and standard approach to calculating noise pollution. But what's wrong? First of all, the data that was collected was probably collected three years ago. So immediately, the data doesn't reflect what's actually happening. Secondly, it's static. The noise pollution layer that was calculated here is based on static data, so you can't expect anything but a static result. As we think about the flatlands, we have to go beyond this idea of taking static layer data, just like we talked about in music, and go to a new place, and really discover the dynamic potential of taking in new content sources dynamic content feeds, live GPS feeds, combined with analytics, delivering a new dynamic information experience. And that's what I want to show you. So we want to focus at Hexagon Live uh, with regards to our R&D, with regards to where we build solutions and capabilities on what should be, not what could be, or not what is, but what should be and what could be. Having seen a very traditional experience in the flatlands, now let's look at what it could be and what it is when you start introducing all of these new elements into the experience so that we can ultimately calculate noise pollution. Moving beyond a flat GIS, we can take all of the layers that we have and start by building the underlying digital fabric every smart city needs, which is 3D. Why is that important in this particular case? Because the noise pollution an individual hears is also a function of what floor they live on, just like air quality is. So but simply by taking a 2D footprint, I can't calculate noise pollution beyond that. When we start piping in a live GPS feed of the train, and start radiating the decibels produced by each moving train, combined with the 3D data, we can actually calculate the impact of noise pollution. This is what we talk about when we talk about escaping the flatlands, Ta moving beyond layers, fusing all this content together with a 3D underlying footprint, and ultimately creating a new experience. Beyond that, adding cinematic and animation techniques to this live experience, we can start incorporating emissions from vehicles, because every time a train stops, the traffic starts to build up. We start adding more sensors. We can calculate, as you see here, noise pollution, air quality pollution, and trains as they move forward.
And this makes sense. Looking at layers that were calculated from static data doesn't make sense. But piping in all of these new content feeds, applying some analytics, and delivering it with an experience that people understand makes sense. And that's what escaping the flatlands is all about.